this is my uh, second lecture in module uh, 5 that is uh, model adequacy checking and uh, here is the uh, content of this module uh, uh, various type of residuals and uh, in the previous class we talked about uh, regular residuals uh, standardized residuals uh, studentized residuals and uh, uh, today we will be talking about you know the press residuals and also uh, next we will be talking about several types uh, types of uh, uh, residual plots like uh, you know uh, normal uh, probability plot uh, or plot of residuals against the uh, fitted values y i hat and uh, and uh, in the next class maybe we will be talking about uh, partial regression and uh, partial uh, residual plot okay so uh, before i uh, uh, start uh, talking about uh, you know the press residual just uh, uh, i want to repeat once more the uh, objective of this uh, module uh, here you know uh, if you can recall you know in, in simple linear regression model or in the multiple linear regression model uh, we have uh, assumed that the uh, error term the epsilon has uh, zero mean uh, and the error term epsilon has uh, a constant variance and the error terms uh, are uncorrelated and uh, they are normally distributed so uh, what we are doing going to do in this module is that uh, we will present you know several uh, methods to uh, to check uh, the 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 underlying assumptions we made uh, on on the error term epsilon okay uh, and uh, the uh, methods are you know they mostly uh, depend on the primarily depend on uh, on the study of uh, residuals because uh, we think uh, uh, it is convenient to think that the residuals are uh, the realized uh, or observed value of the epsilon. Uh, since we are uh, going to test uh, uh, some assumption on, on the error term epsilon, uh, so the test for that is, is, is based on the residuals and the graphical analysis of the uh, of the residuals are very effective to test the underlying uh, assumptions uh, on epsilon okay so now uh, i'll be uh, talking about uh, press residual which is uh, uh, one uh, scaled residual so so i will, i have already talked about uh, regular residual and the other things uh, today i'll be talking about press residual so it's beautiful concept here uh, well uh, the ith press residual Uh, it is denoted by uh, E bracket i is equal to y i minus y i hat. Okay, so, uh, we know that you know y i is the, uh, the, uh, the ith observed value and uh, what is y i hat where y i hat bracket i is uh, the fitted value value of ith 
response based on all observations based on all observations except ith one okay so um, uh, the basic uh, uh, logic uh, behind this is that so this is not the uh, regular residual uh, this is the ith observation the response uh, uh, value of the response variable and this is the fitted value of the ith response uh, based on all observations uh, except the ith observation okay uh, let me just uh, give some idea about uh, about this special type of press residual. I uh, will just refer the previous example, you know this is, uh, this is an example of uh, uh, influential observation. Uh, now, uh, if I fit a model you know uh, based on all the observations here including this influential, influential observation also. Uh, my fitted model may get influenced by this influential observation. Okay. So, the my uh, fitted model uh, may look like this. So, this is the fitted model because of this uh, because of this influential observation and you can see you know that the fitted, ob, uh, fitted model uh, has been influenced by this uh, uh, influential observation and uh, and the fitted value here i mean this is the model based on all the observations so the fitted value here is y i hat so this is my y i hat and this is uh, i'm considering this as you know the ith observation for example and this is my uh, y i this is my y i. Suppose, this is ith observation. Then the residual I mean the, uh, the true value of the ith observation that is the true value y i and the y i hat uh, they are uh, the difference is less. Uh, so, the difference is this much and this is uh, the ith regular residual E i. Now, if I uh, if this ith observation is deleted from this data set, suppose this observation is not there in the model uh, in, in the set of uh, observations, then uh, my fitted model will look like this and this mod, this fitted model is is of course it is not influenced by this influential observation because because I have uh, I am fitting this model uh, based on all the observations except this ith observation. Okay, so uh, so this is what I am talking. This 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 value is you know that this value is y i hat bracket. So, this is what I mean you know the, uh, the uh, fitted value of the uh, of the ith response variable uh, based on all the observation except the ith observation. Now, uh, my uh, uh, residual the revised residual which I call here uh, E i bracket is this difference. So, E i bracket is equal to y i. So, this is my y i, y i right. So, this is my y i and this is my y i hat uh, bracket here. So, y i minus y i 
bracket hat and uh, you can see that uh, the ith press residual is is uh, is substantially uh, large uh, larger than the uh, regular uh, ei okay uh, well so what we do is that uh, we we delete we delete uh, ith observation fit the regression model to the remaining n minus 1 observations and predict yi. Okay. So, uh, it uh, may appear that you know uh, to to compute uh, the first uh, press residual that is E 1 in bracket, uh, you need to uh, fit a model uh, based on all the observations except uh, the first observation. So, that is how you will get uh, E 1 bracket that means, the first uh, press residual. Again you know you do not know which one is the influential observation. So, you have to repeat this process n uh, n time. So, to get uh, E 2 bracket I mean the second uh, press residual uh, again you have to uh, feed a model to uh, to the uh, to the uh, based on all the observations except the second observations. That means, you know you need to feed uh, uh, model uh, based on n minus observe n minus 1 observations that you have to repeat uh, n times. Uh, so, but uh, uh, what uh, we are going to do I mean uh, it, it can be I mean, uh, it can be proved that you know you do not need to uh, repeat this process uh, n times to get the n uh, press residuals. Uh, it, it, it can be done you know based on uh, one regression uh, uh, fit uh, based on all the observations. So, here is the technique. Uh, uh, however, so it says that it is uh, possible to calculate uh, press residual. from from the result of one single feet to to uh, to all in observations okay uh, uh, it can be proved that you know uh, E i the ith press residual is equal to uh, E i by 1 minus H i i. Just recall that you know that this E i is the is the uh, regular residual and uh, H i i is the ith diagonal element of the hat matrix and uh, this is how you know uh, this quantity and this quantity they are they are same. Okay. So, this is how we calculate uh, the press residuals E 1, E 2 up to uh, E n. Uh, 
Uh, now, uh, let me uh, just recall the example uh, we considered in the last class. Uh, so, here is an example of uh, multiple linear regression with, uh, with two regressors x 1 and x 2 and uh, here is the response variable y and uh, we suspect that I mean it is likely that the nine, ninth observation is an influential observation or at least it is a leverage point because, because x 1 uh, coordinate is, is much larger uh, compared, uh, compared to the center of x 1 and, uh, and similarly x 2 uh, value is much larger. And uh, here is the uh, uh, regular residual this is a standardized residual, this is a, the studentized residual and this is the press residual. Okay. Uh, now, here we check that uh, for the ninth observation, the value of the regular residual is 7.41, whereas the value of the ninth press residual. So, this is nothing but this is equal to E 9 press residual. Uh, this is 14.788, whereas the regular uh, residual is 7.4. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the for the point uh, for the ninth, ninth observation, uh, the press residual value is uh, substantially larger than uh, the regular residual. Okay. Now, also you can observe that for the 22nd observation, uh, the value of the regular residual is 3.6, uh, whereas uh, the value of the press residual is uh, minus 6.05. So, uh, so, here also uh, here also the value of the press residual is, is substantially larger than uh, the value of the uh, regular residual for 20 second uh, observation. Okay. So, this is what uh, uh, regarding the press residual, uh, it uh, appears that um, if the ith observation is uh, an influential observation or if it is uh, a leverage point, then uh, there will be substantial difference between the uh, regular residual value and uh, the press residual value uh, for that particular observation. Okay. So, next we uh, move to uh, residual plots. Uh, so, there are several uh, residual plots uh, we will be talking about. The first one is uh, a normal uh, probability plot. Okay. So, residual plots. Okay. So, first uh, we will be talking about normal probability plot. So, uh, before I, I before I uh, talk about uh, this uh, residual plot, you know I just uh, uh, want to mention again that uh, uh, the objective of this uh, module is to uh, is to check the underlining assumption on on epsilon uh, on the error term. Okay, so uh, uh, we'll be talking about uh, different uh, methods to to check the underlining assumptions. So this is one of them. So what this normal uh, probability plot does is that 
basically uh, check uh, the assumption is that the epsilon i follows normal 0 sigma square uh, and they are independent and identically distributed. So, this norm, normal uh, probability plot what it does is that it check it checks whether uh, whether uh, the error term uh, really follow uh, normal distribution or not. So, here is the uh, technique to, uh, to test that. So, what it does is that uh, let uh, E 1, E 2, E n be n residuals that means the regular residuals. Okay. Uh, let E box 1, E box 2, E box n be the residuals ranked in ranked in increasing order. Okay. So, given a set of data you know you can fit the model whether it is simple linear regression or multiple linear regression and then you can get the residual values you just rank them I mean you arrange them in increasing order then uh, what this normal uh, probability plot does is that it, uh, it plots E i against the cumulative probability p i which is equal to i minus half by n and you do, do it for all i, i is from 1 to n. Okay, so, very simple technique uh, you get the residuals first you uh, arrange them in increasing order and then you plot uh, E i uh, against P i here is the P i i minus half by n. Okay, so, just uh, now I have uh, different types of uh, um, normal probability plots that may happen uh, this is uh, so, so figure one uh, shows the ideal situation here you can see that uh, all the points uh, lie on a straight line okay so if in your case if, if you find that you know uh, your uh, your plot and I mean all the points uh, are on the on a straight line then uh, then then you can assume that uh, the error uh, distribution is normal now if uh, here in the figure uh, b you can see that uh, it is not really I mean the the points are not on a single straight line uh, and uh, here uh, if this type of situation occurs then uh, we can say that the distribution is uh, heavily tailed okay? uh, that is you know uh, it is not really true that the uh, that the uh, error distribution is normal. 
and uh, figure C uh, indicates that uh, the distribution of the error term is, uh, is lightly tailed. Okay. So, there is little deviation from the, uh, from the uh, I mean it is not reasonable to assume if, if such situation occur then it is not, uh, uh, not advisable to, to assume that the error distribution is, uh, is normal. Okay. So, this is what uh, regarding the uh, residual plot. So, residual plot uh, basically it, it tests the uh, normality assumption of, of the error terms epsilon. Okay. So, next uh, we will be talking about uh, one more plot that is uh, uh, it's a plot of uh, residual term residual uh, against the fitted observation. Okay. So, here is the plot, a plot of residual E i against the fitted value y i hat. Okay. So, given a set of data you know you, you, you fit the model first and then uh, you can get the fitted value once you have the fitted value you can compute the residual and then you plot uh, the residual against the fitted value. Well, now we need to understand I mean uh, if the plot or if, if the pattern looks like this, one, what does it indicate? Okay. So, uh, if the plot of residual against the fitted value looks like this one, then uh, you can conclude that the, uh, this is a good regression model and uh, the good regression model will produce a, a scatter in residuals that is roughly constant with y hat and centered about uh, e equal to uh, 0. Uh, then uh, I mean uh, what I am trying to say here is that uh, if, um, if, if all the, all the residuals are contained in a horizontal band. So, here is the horizontal band here you know you can you can see that uh, all the uh, points uh, are contained uh, inside this horizontal band. Uh, then, then there are no obvious model defects. That means, if uh, what I want to say here is that you know if if all the residuals are contained uh, in a horizontal a band centered uh, uh, about e equal to 0, this is the line e equal to 0, okay. because the residual value could be uh, this is 0, uh, minus 1, minus 2, 1, 2, 3 like that. Um, um, some of the residuals are positive, some of them are negative. Uh, so, you have observed that before also. So, what I want to say is that if, if the residuals are contained uh, in a horizontal, horizontal band, then there is no uh, obvious uh, defect with the model that means it is a, it's a good fit. So, this is the only situation we say that uh, the fitted model is satisfactory. Okay? So, there is no problem with the fitted model. 
Now uh, look at the second case. Uh, uh, this is uh, this figure B. Uh, uh, indicates uh, an outward opening funnel pattern. Okay, so here you can see that uh, this uh, EI values. increase i mean ei increases with uh, with the value with uh, yi hat okay so this is this is called the outward uh, open funnel pattern uh, what does this indicate is that this indicates that the uh, indicates non constant variance of epsilon i we, we assume the see uh, uh, we have assumed uh, that uh, the variance of the epsilon is constant that is sigma square but but if your uh, residual i mean if, if your uh, plot which uh, plot plot i mean the uh, this plot particular like like epsilon versus uh, epsilon sorry ei uh, against uh, yi hat if the pattern is uh, like you know outward uh, open funnel uh, that indicates that the variance of uh, epsilon i or the variance of epsilon uh, increases as uh, y increases. So, this one is sort of uh, this is the indication of a non constant variance. So, you cannot if this occurs you know uh, it is uh, not advisable to, to assume that the variance of epsilon is sigma square. Okay? So, next we talk about some more pattern. The next pattern is okay, one more thing just I forgot to mention here. Uh, here in, instead of instead of uh, outward open funnel, it could be uh, inward open funnel also. That means, you know, it would be look like this. Uh, in that case, uh, that case also indicates that uh, you now uh, indicates that non constant variance of epsilon uh, in that case variance of epsilon uh, decreases as as y increases so uh, both the, i mean the uh, it could be outward open funnel or it could be inward open funnel so bo in both the case both the cases indicate that uh, indicate the non constant variance of um, epsilon okay so next uh, we'll be talking about uh, one more uh, i mean uh, some more uh, pattern like uh, this is one more pattern uh, here this is the line e equal to 0 y i hat in this direction and this is called uh, double bow and this one also uh, indicates non constant variance that means uh, variance of epsilon we cannot assume that this is equal to sigma square uh, so this pattern also violate uh, this assumption uh, well and uh, uh, this type of pattern uh, often occurs when when y is is a proportion the response variable is a proportion and uh, y lies between 0 to 1 okay so this is in uh, in this type of situations uh, we often get double bow uh, pattern okay now the last one is that you know uh, the figure d shows the nonlinear pattern here this uh, nonlinear pattern um, indicates that you know other regressor variables are needed in the model so this indicates that the relationship between y and the 
regressor variable uh, is not linear, we need to introduce some nonlinear term and that means uh, consider extra term like uh, square term x square. I mean the relation is not just the linear relation like y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 uh, x, you need to introduce some square term the higher order term uh, or you uh, you trans uh, you take a transformation of the response variable y okay i mean maybe we'll talk uh, regarding this issues later on again but uh, what uh, this uh, nonlinear pattern indicates that the relationship between uh, between the response variable and the regressor variable is not linear we need to introduce some um, uh, some other terms like you know other regressors for example uh, you need to take you may, may need to take x square or x cube in the model or you may uh, need to take a transformation of the uh, response variable y like log y or something 1 by y something like that. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, there is a question uh, you may you might be wondering you know why do what we did is that we uh, we have just checked uh, about you know, the plot of plot of ei against yi hat so so why it is you know why uh, plotting ei against yi hat uh, why not ei against uh, yi so this is the question uh, why do we plot the residual ei uh, against y i hat and not against y i for the usual linear model. Okay. Uh, it is not so easy to answer this question like uh, uh, you can think of it e i y i hat. Uh, uh, the answer to this question is that you know e i and uh, and y i we do not consider the plot e i against y i because these two are usually correlated. What I mean by this? I okay, will talk about that. Whereas, E i and y i hat are not correlated, there is no relationship between E i and y i hat. Uh, uh, what we are going to prove is that there is a linear relationship between, uh, between E i and uh, y i. Uh, suppose the relationship is the form of the relation is uh, E i. I said linear relationship E i equal to some beta naught plus beta 1 y i plus epsilon i. I mean that is a simple linear regression between uh, sim simple linear relationship between the residual and the observed value y i. Okay. Now, if you, you know the same technique this is this is nothing but the simple linear regression model between uh, the residual and y i, you can check that beta 1 hat is nothing but S e y by S y y. Okay. So, what is E S y? Th this is this is the least square estimate. You can check with uh, my first module. Uh, beta 1 hat is nothing but this one, this is called the least square estimate. So, this one is nothing but this is notation only, this is nothing but E i minus E bar into y i minus y bar by summation y i minus y bar whole square. So, what I am trying to prove that you know there is a uh, uh, relationship between 
between y i and e i uh, uh, and I am trying to find out that relationship, uh, what type of relationship it, uh, they have. Uh, if it is linear then what is the value of the coefficient. Okay? So, this one is nothing but uh, summation e i y i minus y bar. You can check that, it is not difficult and this one is nothing but the s s t. Okay? And uh, again you know y bar into e i that is sum over e i is going to be 0. So, this is equal to summation e i y i by s s t very simple. Uh, now, in matrix notation this can be written as E prime uh, y or y prime E same thing okay, by S S T. Uh, now, what is E in terms of H notation y prime and E we know E is i minus H y. Right? by S S T and we know that you know I minus since H is an idempotent matrix, I minus H is also idempotent matrix. So, I minus H can be replaced by I minus H square. So, this is equal to Y prime uh, I minus H into I minus H because I minus H into I minus H equal to I minus H as i minus h is an idempotent matrix into y by s s t. Well, so this is nothing but see this is e this is e prime this is by e prime e by s s t. So, e prime e is nothing but s s residual right this is nothing but s s residual by S S T, which is nothing but one minus S S regression by S S T, which is nothing but one minus uh, R square. So this R square is the, if you can recall, R square is the coefficient of uh, multiple determination. Well, so. Uh, so, the relationship between, uh, so the, what we proved is that there is a uh, linear relationship between, between, between the residual and the observed value and the coefficient value, I mean the slope is equal to, the slope is equal to 1 minus r square. Well, uh, let me check with uh, uh, why I had whether there is a linear relationship between between E i and why I had. Uh, we can prove that uh, there is that uh, the slope is 0 in that ca case. So, let me check with E i and why I had. So, E i suppose there is a relation linear relation between E i and why I had and the relation is E i equal to beta naught plus beta 1 y i hat plus epsilon like that in a simple linear regression. And then uh, by least square estimate we can check that beta hat is equal to S e y hat by S y hat y hat. I do not care about uh, this denominator. Uh, let me proceed with S S E Y hat. If I can prove that this is equal to zero, then uh, then my slope is going to be equal to zero. That means there is a there is no linear relationship between uh, between E I and Y I hat. Uh, so this is going to be equal to uh, E I minus E bar into y i hat minus y bar 
and you can check that this is nothing but um, summation E i y i hat. So, in matrix notation this is equal to E prime y hat right. So, what is E prime? E prime is equal to y prime 1 minus h right because E equal to 1 minus h y and uh, y hat is equal to y hat equal to h y. We know that y hat is equal to h y. So, h y here now y prime h minus h square into y. Now, see h is an idempotent matrix. So, h square is going to be equal to h. So, this is y prime 0 basically y. So, this is going to be equal to 0. So, so there, is, there is no, uh, so this proves that there is no uh, linear relationship uh, between, <coughs> between the residual and uh, the fitted uh, values. Well, so uh, what uh, I want to conclude here is that uh, no, unless in case of in case of uh, in case of e i and y i uh, we have observed that uh, beta 1 hat is equal to 1 minus r square. So, in the case of e i and y i beta 1 hat is equal to 1 minus 1 minus r square. Okay. So, unless r square is equal to 1, there is a positive slope, right? Uh, there will be a slope of 1 minus r square in E i versus Y i plot. Even if, even if there is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with the model. So, if you can recall that uh, um, uh, in, in E i versus in E i against y i hat plot, uh, I said that if uh, all the residuals, all the residuals are contained uh, in a horizontal band uh, centered uh, around e equal to 0, then the corresponding fitted model is perfect. But here since uh, there is a theoretical relationship between the residual and, uh, and the uh, residual and y i. Uh, it is very likely that uh, that the residuals will not be contained uh, within a horizontal band uh, centered uh, at uh, I mean e equal to 0. There will be a slope uh, of 1 minus r square uh, when r square is not equal to 0. So, that is why you know uh, it is very difficult to conclude anything uh, if we plot the residual against y i uh, instead of plotting the residual against y i hat. So, that is why the reason you know and, and uh, since there is no relationship uh, uh, between e i and y i hat they are not correlated there is no linear relationship between them uh, that is why we prefer plotting uh, the residual uh, against 
uh, yi hat yeah so that's all for today thank you